Welcome to FMA0146 Passive Mathematics. In this video, we are going to discuss about extremum problems. Over here, what is the, uh, if you look at it, extremum is the uh, singular for the extrema, so means that any point that at which the value of a function is the largest, or we can call it as a maximum, or a smallest, we call it as a minimum. If you look at this diagram, we have two maximum. One is called global maximum, another one is local maximum. What is the difference between global maximum and the local maximum is? Global means that in, if you compare these two maximum, uh, the x1 is the highest, so this one is called global maximum. And then for this local maximum, x3, is in between x2 and x4, so x3 is the maximum, so it's called as a local maximum. And then after that, we have another one point is called inflection point. Inflection point that is, it is not a maximum nor a minimum. So the inflection point is where the concave of this uh, line is changing. Okay, now uh, over here we are going to learn is only finding a global maximum. There is no local maximum in our syllabus. Now, we are going to discuss, okay, so we have three types as a previous uh, uh, diagram showing that we have three types of uh, point, maximum, okay, minimum, and the inflection point. Now, how to find this type of point that is? First thing, we have one term is called stationary points. The stationary point of a curve y equal to fx is a point on the curve where the gradient is zero. So my dy dx must be zero and from this stationary point we can classify them into two either it's a turning point or it's an inflection point the turning point means that you turn okay from you are going to the positive gradient and then you turn it to become a negative gradient or from a negative gradient you turn it to become a positive gradient but but if you see the inflection is they never change the gradient the gradient this is still positive but the thing is they change the concavity so it means that at the beginning the concavity in is like a n shape after that they change it concavity to be like a u shape or they call it as a concave up or the concave down now uh, in this uh, video, you are going to learn how to find or how to identify or how to classify the maximum or minimum or the inflection point. Now, we have two different tests. The first one is called first derivative test and the second one is called second derivative test. What are the difference between two is... Okay, now, bo both methods, okay, both tests, you need to find, the first one is find the x value of a turning point or find the x value of the stationary point by using f prime x equals to 0. After you already getting this f, letting f prime x equals to 0, you will find x equals to certain value. Later on, you put this value in the respective table and then you label them one is the okay this is a c1 and then if you look at here there is a positive and there is a negative it means that the value on the right hand side of the c1 and the value on the left hand side of the c1 after that you calculate the value of the dy dx later on from this value of the dy dx and you determine the shape of it and later on you can identify what is the type of the point okay so uh, no worry that is we are going to uh, learn it by example later on we have the second derivative test in second derivative test is the same thing that is you need to find the turning point later on you need to do the second derivative test and if then you substitute the respective c into the 
uh, second derivative and you will check whether it's a maximum or minimum point. If you look at here, f triple prime is greater than zero actually is a minimum okay why because it's already the concavity and then the thing if f triple prime is less than zero is a maximum so they are contra and if what if happen if f triple prime equals to zero and you need to back to the first derivative test and then you will check uh, whether your point is maximum or minimum so now we look at, at the first example. We have the first derivative. Okay, our first example is find the extremum point for fx equals to x cubed minus 12x plus 1. Okay, so uh, at this one, I will show you two different methods or two different tests to test on the same question. Then you can identify which problem you prefer. But there are certain times the question is already stated you must use which method. So by anyhow, you must know both methods. Now, this one is the first derivative test. Find the extreme point. So what we need that thing is first thing find the stationary point means i have fx equals to s cubed minus 12 it said that is you need to get f prime x equals to zero so my f prime x equals to 3x squared minus 12 and i need to equate it to become a zero so from here is 3x squared equals to 12 and then x squared actually equals to 4 and from here i know that is my x is plus minus 2 and because of the question asking for point so i need to get when x equals to 2 what is my y so i need to substitute 2 into here to help me to find the y or i'm getting f2 so i have the 2 power of 3 minus 12 to plus 1 so is 8 minus 24 plus 1 so finally is negative uh okay i have a negative 23 8 so i have negative 15 later on when my x equals to negative 2 so i'm going to find f negative 2 equals to negative 2 power of 3 minus 12 minus 2 plus 1 so i'm going to have to negative 8 plus 24 plus 1 so i have a 25 minus 8 so i'm going to have 17. so my stationary point by using f prime x equals to 3x squared minus 12 x equals to 0 i got two different points the first point is 2 negative 15 and then the second point is negative 2 17 okay now after i already get my point what i need to do okay i will plug it into the uh, respective uh, table the table is always look like this where you have your x and you have the dy dx and you have the slope and the last one is the type okay now since the first one i know okay so first one i know is two and then there is a negative two okay now what you need to do is if you try and see this is two this is negative two okay so this is two this is negative two when over there we need to label it as negative two plus this is negative 2 minus this is a 2 plus this is a 2 minus on the right hand side is the plus on the left hand side is the minus okay now what is the next thing you need to do is please choose a number greater than 2 okay so over here i just choose a number which is 3 okay and a number smaller than 2 okay a number smaller than 2 you cannot choose a number smaller than negative 2 because if you choose smaller than negative 2 you already cross to another one point so uh, you just choose in between negative 2 and 2 so i choose 0 the easiest for me is 0 since this one i already choose 0 so this one i choose 
0. Negative 2 right hand side of my negative 2 is 0. The value of the left hand side of my negative 2 I choose as a negative 3. Okay, so now what's next? What you need to do is you substitute 3. Okay, you substitute 3 into this slope. Okay, so means that you're going to have 3. 3 power of 2 minus 12. So this one actually is 27 minus 12. I know it's a greater than 0. When I substitute 0 inside, minus 12 actually is less than 0. When a slope, okay, or the dy dx is greater than 0, my slope is in this shape. When my slope is dy dx is less than 0, my slope look like this, okay? Why? Actually, you still remember when I have a y equals to mx plus c, when my m is a positive number, my slope is always look like this. And my m less than 0, my slope is always look like this. Okay, now, if you see over here, I have a sum. If you join the line up, you were having like a u shape. So this one is a minimum point. So I can put here that is 2, negative 15 is a minimum point. Okay, after that, for this one, you need to do the same thing. Now it's a negative 2. Just now we already know that is is less than 0. So the curve look like this, the slope look like this. And then if I substitute negative 2 inside my dx, so it's 3, negative 2, power of 2, minus 2, 12, actually is greater than 0. So it looks like this. So and if you see that this is a set phase, actually this one is a maximum. So now my point of negative 2, 17 is a maximum point. Okay, so... Now, if you look at it, this is our first derivative test. Okay, what the first derivative test does is, first thing, you need to find the stationary point. And then, after you, by using f prime x equals to 0. After you already have your point, what you need to do is, you need to put into the table. Okay, you need two ta different table. And you need to check whether it is a maximum point or it is a minimum point, how to check, actually, you are checking on the shape of the dy dx or the shape uh, or the pattern of your slope, okay? So if greater than zero, the slope look like this. If less than zero, it will be look like this one. So, and then from this kind of shape, you will, can determine whether it's a maximum or minimum. Okay, so this one is your first derivative test. Okay, now we go for the second, uh, we go for the second method or the second test. We are using the same method. Okay, sorry, the same equations, which is uh, actually is fx equals to x cubed minus 12x. So what you need to do is still start from the zero means that you need to find f prime x equals to 3x squared minus 12 equals to zero. Your x actually is plus minus 2. And actually just now from the previous slide, I already calculated my 2 is paired with negative 15 and my negative 2 is paired with 17. Now, in this particular second derivative test is what we need to do, we need to find f double prime. How to find f double prime? We start from f prime. So I have an f double prime. So I have a 6x and then this is a constant. It's become a 0. So what is the next thing? You are going to test on the different x. So when my x equals to 2, y is 2 because these are my uh, stationary points. So when x equals to 2, f double prime 2 actually is 12, is greater than 0. Okay, from here, if x double prime is greater than 0, this is a minimum point. When x equals to negative 2, 
f double prime is negative 2 and this is negative 12 is less than 0 and this one will become a maximum. So actually if you see that is the conclusion negative 2, 2, negative 15 and 17. This one uh, f2 actually is a minimum. This one is a maximum and regardless you are using the first derivative test or the second derivative test the conclusion must be the same the only difference is second derivative test you need to differentiate the function twice if the first derivative test you need to do the table so that is all that is the main difference but why the first derivative test always exists because there are some cases where your second derivative test is failed. Later on, there is one example to show to you that is how the second derivative test will be failed. Okay, now, maybe some of you will ask, what is the purpose when I'm finding my maximum point or minimum point? From here, one of the most basic way or the most uh, easy application of this is you can use this one to plot a graph okay so how to plot x cubed minus 2 of x plus 1 so now i am going to label my i'm going to label my point negative 2 1 2 17 is around here so this is 17, this is negative 2, 1, 2, this is 2, this is, let's say this one is negative 15. And from the negative 2, 15, I know it's a minimum, so it's a smiling face. And this one is a sad face, and you join these two up, and then you extend a little bit. So this is how the x cubed minus 12x plus 1 look like. So... It's helping you to sketch a graph. Okay, now we go going to be repeat the same thing, but for different example. Okay, so now we can go uh, for a quick one. So y prime equals to differentiate at is differentiate x is one. Okay, now this one before anything we change it to become one minus x half. So differentiate this one is half. 1 minus x, negative half, and then don't forget differentiate inner, so I have a minus, okay? So, and this one, I change back to become 1 over 1 over 2, third, 1 minus x, and it must equals to 0. So, when it equals to 0, I need to find the x, so I have 2, Okay, 2, 1, uh, sorry, 1 over 2 third, 1 minus x equals to 1. So I flip it or I change it, third, 1 minus x equals to uh, 1 over 2. Okay, eh, sorry, right, right, 1, I shift it here. So, and then my 1 minus x equals to 1 over 4. Okay, bring it here. So actually my x actually is 3 over 4. When my x equals to 3 over 4, okay, I substitute inside my y equals to 3 over 4 plus third 1 minus 1 over 4. So I have 3 over 4 plus third 3 over 4. Correct, right? Okay, eh, sorry, uh, my x is 3 over 4. Sorry, this one is, uh, so 1 over 4. So I have 3 over 4 plus 1 over 2. So I'm going to have uh, 8. <sighs> 6 over 8, am I right? Uh, no. This one times 2, actually, sorry, is a 5 over 8. Okay, now I have, okay, if you look at this example, how many stationary points you have? You only have one. So if you only have one stationary point, so you don't need two different tables. You only need one table only. Okay, now what we need to do is, since my x is 3 over 4, 
on the right hand side of 3 over 4 any numbers greater than 3 over 4 or greater than 0 0.5 actually is 1 any number less than 0 0.7 i chose 0 so i uh, sorry this one i sorry i should label this one as 3 over 4 plus 3 over 4 minus number greater than 3 over 4 is 1 and less than 3 over 4 is 0 so i when i substitute 1 into my this derivative Okay, when I substitute 1 into, okay, so now we facing another 1 problem. I cannot choose 1, okay, why I cannot choose 1 over here? Because if I choose 1 over here, my this value, okay, my this value will become 0 and will become an infinity. So what I do is, I just choose another number okay i just choose another one number uh any okay so let's say i choose a number slightly greater than 0 0.75 okay this one actually is 7.5 i choose 0 0.8 so i choose 0 0.8 and i substitute inside here so i will get 1 minus 1 over 2 third 1 minus 0 0.8 if you see over here, this one is 1 minus 2 multiplied 0 point, uh, third 0 0.2. And you will know that is this number. Okay, so let me check uh, what is the value of this one. So 1 minus uh, 1 divided by 2 third. 0 0.2 actually this is a negative value okay this one is less than 0 and if i substitute 0 inside so 1 minus 1 over 2 set 1 okay so set 1 actually is 1 so i have this one is a positive number so my slope here is uh, this one and here so i have a maximum so my point 3 over 4 and 5 over 8 is a maximum point okay now i repeat because i saw maybe uh, you will get a little bit confused okay so what over here is okay <laughs> first thing my y equals to x plus third y minus x. So I change the third into power of half. Later on, what I do is I differentiate it and must equate to zero. And because I need to find my x. After I finding my x, okay, my x is 3 over 4. So I substitute my 3 over 4 into the y and I, sorry, into the x. So I can find my value of my y actually is 5 over 8. So now I have a point 3 over 4 and 5 over 8. And by using first derivative test, I need to put inside a table. Because I only have one stationary point, so I only need one table. So I have 3 over 4, and then the one greater than 3 over 4, and the one less than 3 over 4. A number less than 3 over 4, I choose 0. And just now, for a number greater than 3 over 4, at the beginning, I choose 1. Okay. Why suddenly I change or I change my point? The reason is, if we look at this one, 1 minus 1 over 2, third, 1 minus x. If my x equals to 1, I will get 1 over 1 over 2, 1 minus 1. This one is a 0. Okay. I will get 1 minus 1 over 0. Actually, this one is an infinity or a, is a max error. So, you cannot choose x equals to 1. Okay? And for if you want to know what happened to when you choose x equals to 1, and then actually you will have an axiom thought. Okay? So, but the thing it is not in your syllabus. So, what you need to 
to do that is you just accept that you just choose a number slightly greater than 0 0.75 actually is 0 0.8 and then you substitute the 0 0.8 or the 0 into the derivative and you get the number greater or less than 0 so you get the slope and then you can conclude okay now we look at the second derivative test we are going to do the same y prime 1 plus sorry 1 plus half and then this one is a sorry is a minus 1 minus x minus 1 over 2 and like just now my point must be the same actually 3 over 4 and 5 over what you need to do, you need to do finding the y double prime, differentiate 1 is 0. And then this one, you will get positive 1 over 4. And then 1 minus x, this one negative 3 over 2. Don't forget inner uh, differentiate and then you will get another negative. Okay, now what you need to do, substitute the value x3 over 4 or... This one actually is 0 0.75. Inside here, y double prime, negative 1 over 4, 1 minus 0 0.75, power to negative 3 over 2. Okay, so what we do is we just uh, calculate the value. Okay, so uh, actually this one is 0 0.25. So I have a minus 0 0.25 multiply 0 0.25 power of negative 1.5 so actually this one is negative 2 and is less than 0 is a maximum so you can tell people 3 over 4 5 over 8 is a maximum point okay so this one uh Always for me that is second derivative test is always faster or is or uh, is less trouble. But the thing is, there are certain time when the function is not uh not that easy to differentiate and it will cause you problem. Or when you look at this example, when I have a y equals to x power of three. My y prime equals to x3 or uh, 3x squared equals to 0 and my x equals to 0. And then if I use the uh, second derivative test, okay, if you see that y equals to x cubed, okay, y equals to x cubed y prime is equals to 3x squared equals to 0, my x equals to 0. When my x equals 0, actually my y also equals to 0 because substitute here. And by the second derivative test, I'm going to find y double prime actually equals to 6x. Okay. So when you substitute, when x equals to 0, you substitute inside here actually is 0. So it is not greater than 0, nor less than zero so means that this thing is not conclusive okay it, you fail okay so then the suggestion of this uh for this thing is you use your first derivative test you use zero and a number greater than zero and the number less than zero okay a number greater than zero let's say you choose is one and less than 0, you choose negative 1. And if you substitute inside the derivative, actually, they both are positive. So this one actually is an inflection point. Okay, actually, if you want to know that how the S cube look like, actually, it look like this one. So this is the only not say the only this is a very special case where you get an inflection point most of the time we didn't get inflection point okay okay so now uh we try another one and two uh maybe one exercise so uh, two exercises so uh we uh, let you to see how it going to find you what you want to do okay so first thing for y 
equals to 4x squared plus x minus 1 because I bring the denominator out. So y prime equals to 8x plus, sorry, is a minus x minus 2 and this one must equals to 0. So for the easy purpose, so I will change it to become x 1 over x squared equals to 0. 8x cubed minus 1 equals to 0. My x cubed equals to 1 over 8. So my x actually is 1 over 2. When my x equals to 1 over 2, when you substitute inside here, my y should be getting 3. Eh? Okay, I didn't calculate x equals to 3. Okay, now the first part of the maximum, uh, we're finding extreme point is already, this is called our first part. Later on, what you need to do, you need to decide. You want to use the first derivative or you want to use the second derivative test. Okay. Now, uh, I more prefer to do second derivative test first because uh, it is less messy. So, from y prime equals to 8x minus x minus 2, I get my y double prime actually is 8 minus sorry is a plus x minus 3 and i substitute x equals to 1 over 2 so my y double prime actually is 8 plus 1 over 1 over 2 power of 3 and actually i don't need to really calculate what is this value but i'm very sure this value must be greater than 0 so i can conclude my half entry is a minimum point okay so now i back to my first directive so from here i need to build the table okay my table okay so uh, first one is dy dx after that is the shape or and then this is the uh, point okay now what is my first i need to substitute actually is half a number Okay, so half plus and half minus. A number greater than 0 0.5, I choose 1. A number less than half, actually, I choose 0. So this one must be 0, by default must be 0, and the shape must be like this. Okay, so I if I substitute 1 into my dy dx, okay, so I will get when x equals to 1, 8, 1 minus 1 over 1 actually is less greater than 0. Okay, so it's a greater than greater than 0. Okay, and then from here, okay, if you see that is, if I substitute, uh, okay, so when I choose Okay, now, it come back another one problem. Why I couldn't choose 0? Okay, if I choose 0, this one will become infinity. So, what you need to do is we choose a number slightly uh, less than 0 0.5. And then maybe I choose, uh, okay, so I choose 0 0.3. Okay, so I have 8. 0 0.3 minus 1 0 0.3 square okay so then wait uh, okay 2.4 minus uh 1 divided by 0 0.2 square so this one actually is a negative 8.7 is less than zero is shaped like this and this one is like this so my point is a minimum okay now from this example or the previous example you will notice uh, for the first derivative test you have something very crucial that is you need to avoid certain point especially it come to the denominator now, let's say I have something is exponent and my y equals to t exponent t and you have no other way 
you need to use a product rule. Okay, so my product rule, my u equals to t, my u prime equals to 1, my v is et, my v prime is et. Okay, so y prime equals to t et, okay, plus et. And this one equals to zero. So when I factor out my, sorry, I factor out et, equal, okay, et, so t plus one equals to zero. And my et, I'm sorry, et never be zero, okay, exponent never be zero. Huh? So my t plus 1 equals to 0. So my t actually is negative 1. When I substitute t equals to negative 1, I will get my y actually is negative 0 0.368. Okay. And now, if you see over here, okay, if you see over here, okay, this question, okay, if I strip away, okay, I strip away, Doing the first derivative test, this is negative 1. So, negative 1 plus, negative 1, uh, negative. Okay. Then, I have dy dx. I have the shape. Okay. Now, this one is 0. It's a flat. Okay. Number greater than negative 1, I choose 2. Okay. Number less than negative 1, maybe I choose negative 2. Okay, so I substitute into my dy dx. Okay, I substitute 2 inside. Okay, 2. So I have 3 e2. And this one is I have uh, if negative 1, so I will have uh, I still cannot choose negative, oh sorry, choose negative 2. So I have my negative e negative 2. Okay, so now exponent uh, never negative. So this one must be a positive. This must be a negative. So your slope is like this. So it's a minimum. Okay, and now how about for the uh, second derivative test? Okay, second derivative test, you are start, okay, either you want to start from here. Okay, so your u is equals to et, your v equals to t plus 1, so your u prime is et, and your v prime equals to 1, so you're going to have e y double prime equals to et, plus e t t plus 1. Okay, actually you no need to arrange back. What you need to do is substitute x equals to, I'm uh, sorry, t equals to negative 1 inside here. So you're going to have e negative 1 plus e negative 1 and this one is negative 1 plus 1 actually is 0 and this one is greater than 0 so it's a minimum okay the both will give you the same conclusion okay so now uh, for the chapter 7.2 i will stop here and then you're going to have your last part is 7.3 the application in the business and the finance thank you